Suffice to say, Final Fantasy VII Remake looks like it's going to be going in a very different direction from the original. The game's ending, combined with numerous interviews from the developers, has confirmed as such. This has some people excited and some people not so excited. And upon this discovery, people have been wondering who exactly is behind these ideas for these changes. Well now I think we have some more answers thanks to a recent interview with Famitsu featuring Naoki Hamaguchi, yet again translated by the wonderful Aitai Kimochi. With Hamaguchi being asked, quote, Since you were involved with the development of the game, was there anything you were concerned about? What was constantly said to the team was, we must respect the original game. We were not creating a new game that is only inspired by the characters in World of FF7, but we strove to create a game where the elements of the original are remade using the latest game design and graphics, making it feel nostalgic yet new. If we were to stray far from the source material, then people might think, this is not the FF7 that I know. So we tried to follow the original story but added details where we could not add 20 years ago, using the latest technology. With that, we were able to focus on enriching the story to create the experience that is still the FF7 that I know, but with a lot more new things waiting to be discovered. That's honestly a great approach and when you mention Final Fantasy VII Remake, ideally that's the type of experience that I want. Something that is still identifiably FF7, but does have new surprises around the corner. However, it's when we talk about if this story should go off in a brand new direction after this first game that things become sort of divisive. And considering that the next few games might go off in a completely different direction, with this series potentially being Final Fantasy 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth, and this has led some fans to blame either Tetsuya Nomura or other people on the development team for who's responsible for these changes. And the answer that Hamaguchi gives is quite surprising. Hamaguchi being asked, quote, I'm sure that there are several younger development staff who've never played the original FF7. So were there any instances where there was a bit of a generation gap? Hamaguchi replying, Since the original game was so widely loved by fans everywhere, there were a lot of younger staff members who were scared of making changes. On the other hand, producer Yoshinori Kitase wanted to make big changes, he laughed. Nomura and I saw the remake as a homage to the original game. So if we were to change anything, we made sure that it would be something planned with a specific reason that fans could accept. Honestly, that still doesn't tell you whose idea the whole remake sequel thing was. But it is interesting to see that the younger demographic of the development team were actually the ones with the, and I, I hate the way this term relates to remake, but purist. Though in full honesty, it's very easy for me to see how the original developers would be the ones more willing to change than the younger development staff. When you're the original creator, you feel like you have the liberty to change these things because they were your ideas in the first place. And so because of that, you don't feel the same hesitation that you would be handling somebody else's property. So I think that while this may surprise others, it doesn't really surprise me in the slightest. But whether you love or hate the changes, it really doesn't matter which person or group of people did a certain thing. As a development team, they all work together and they all agreed that this was the direction that they wanted to go in. They had several discussions about it, and for the most part, as a collective, they decided that this was the way to go. So if you don't like it, or if you love it, the ship either sails or sinks together. I actually have a lot of thoughts in this regard, and don't worry, you will be seeing that in a future video coming relatively soon. And that's not all for JRPG news today. Persona 5 Scramble has been recently reconfirmed for a Western release. As translated by Persona Central, Koei Tecmo released their financial statements for the first quarter of the fiscal year, ending in March. 2021. And in that financial statement, Persona 5 Scramble's Western release is mentioned. Now you may recall back in April of this year where Koei Tecmo also released their financial reports, and in it they mentioned an overseas release for Persona 5 Scramble. Persona Central notes that this was likely referring to the traditional Chinese and Korean releases that came in June 2020. This earnings report, however, explicitly refers to the Western version. And I am so excited to finally get my hands on this game. You guys who follow me here or on Twitter or on Facebook, y'all know just how much I love Persona 5. It is one of my favorite games of all time, and to see it basically get a sequel like this that I'm actually going to be able to play 
and we'll be able to play it on the Nintendo Switch, no less. So yeah, the game is coming sometime between now and March 2021. This means that we should see some type of marketing material and English trailer, hopefully with some English voice acting, should all be coming pretty soon. But with all of that said, Ultima, I want to hear from you. What do you think of the younger staff wanting a true to the original FF7 remake? And are you excited, like me, for Persona 5 Scramble? Subscribe, click the bell icon, and let me know in the comments below. And if you value the content on this channel, be sure to check out the Patreon for the Night Sky Prince, where these videos are made possible by people like Christos Petro. I hope I said your name correctly, man. So if this channel means a lot to you, be sure to check the link in the description below. Shout out to Christos and the rest of the Ultima community. Okay.